Welcome to GearCheck Games. This is part 17 of our commentary for Banjo-Kazooie. Last time we explored Click Clock Wood during the spring and the summertime, and today we're going to explore it during the autumn season. This is a demanding bird. Probably the, the, the most visually appealing in my opinion. <laughs> Mainly because there's no other area in the game that like looks like this, whereas mm. all the other ones kind of have like an analog somewhere else. This reminds me of another autumn level. You know my love of Pikmin. In Pikmin 3, the Twilight River is a gorgeous yeah. zone, and it looks like this. It's probably the oh, yeah. best level in the game. Oh, is it that is. the zone you were playing in between recording sessions? It was. I was finishing nice. up the foot. All this banjo has put me in the mood for Pikmin. Mm. It does. It's kind of like Banjo Pikmin episode mood. 17, Pikmin 3. <laughs> uh huh. Instead of Jim, just going around up. picking up all these different colors of Pikmin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Trey. In um, in reference to what you were saying in the last episode about how few jiggies we had after like nearly a half hour in this level, um, the rate at which you get jiggies kind of like exponentially increases like the further along you go into the seasons. Um, just because a lot of them require you to perform tasks in other seasons to obtain. Like here, um, you know, we learn about the boulder blocking the beaver's house in spring. We get rid of it in the summer, but we can't actually go in here until autumn because the water's gone uh, and hasn't come back yet. You know, I kind of wonder if this level was one of the first signs of the Banjo team's design philosophy kind of evolving to what it ended up being in Tui. Mm hmm Well, I mean, that might be true for the level, but I know that this music um, is actually... Uh, was originally intended to be used in Project Dream, and I think mm. was kind of minimally changed for its inclusion in Kazooie. What was Project Dream? Uh, it was like the Banjo Kazooie prototype that had like the pirates and everything. Oh. For Super Nintendo. Yeah, I remember hearing Grant Kirkhope talk about this song somewhere, and he claimed that like it doesn't sound like the rest of the music in Banjo, or that it's not composed similarly. And I suppose there's there's probably some truth to that, and you know, certainly don't <laughs> presume to school the man on music, but like, I don't know. I always thought it fit well. I guess that just means you did a good job with it. Hmm. You came to the... You, you have beaten that camel up, like, five times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's not taking it anymore. He's running mm -hmm. so far away that he ends up in the next game. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, you, find, you do find him in the lava world in the next game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, in the lava section of a world from yeah. Tui. Was he, like... It, does he say something to the the effect of, uh, I honestly never thought I would have saw you here? Uh-huh. Well, actually, I think in, um, in Tui, before you find him in Hailfire Peaks, he's in, uh, prison in Witchy oh, World. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have him captured, and they're showing him off like a freak, like a carnival freak show oh. exhibit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Along with a Jinjo and a dinosaur. And a dinosaur. God, I love Witchy World. Uh, Such a yeah. good level. Then I'm pretty sure that's my favorite level in Tui. Witchy World is the Mad Monster Mansion of Tui, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. It's always like the vaguely spooky themed levels that are the best Banjo worlds. Yeah. Spooky it's not even cool. spooky, it's just kind of like... It's, it's like a level that is based off of, you know, something you'd find in the real world. And, yeah. But just like also really... <laughs> Just tongue and cheek, tongue and cheek, like just grungy and crummy, just like a poorly yeah. run carnival. Oh. Right. Does yeah, Mad Monster Mansion is like like cartoon spooky, but Witchy World like kind of has like a legitimately like I don't want to say creepy atmosphere, but like it does feel kind of like a rundown place. Yeah. <laughs> so it feels like the the annual fair run by people of questionable morality that runs through town every day, every year. Ba basically. Yeah. It's got like a... <laughs> it's pretty much just like a funny uh, just satire or whatever of just like 
cheap carnivals and stuff like yeah it's got it's got yeah, the there are like exploited. food vendors <laughs> yeah like yeah there's like a like a burger shop guy who like takes burgers off the floor and puts them back on the grill yeah it's got like exploitative unfair carnival games it's got the mm-hmm. uh <laughs> it's got like the family that's also visiting there that the kids just kind of ran off on their own and they're just like <laughs> everybody's having a terrible day <laughs> yeah Have you ever had a day Broken at a down carnival? Rides that are clearly unsafe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you ever no had a day, a day like that at a carnival or a theme park where, like, you went in with high expectations and just, like, everything goes wrong? Like, you lose your party, you drop your wallet while you're doing a loop-to-loop, like, somebody gets overheated, two people throw up, like... <laughs> I don't think I can ever remember having, like, a terrible time at a carnival, mm-hmm. but I remember, um... I think I was like eight years old when we were visiting my uncle on the East Coast, and we went to uh, Hershey Park, and it just poured the entire oh day. Uh, honestly, that's just as bad, because it's like, well, now I can only get on like a third of the rides. Yeah. yeah. That was also the first time I ever went on a roller coaster, and it <laughs> was like this really, like... For, for me at the time, it, was, it seemed like this really rickety, terrifying wooden roller coaster... And I was just like, I never want to ride one of these again. <laughs> yeah, wooden roller and then we went to Sesame you know. Place and I rode the Grover themed, or the Super Grover roller coaster and all was well. Yeah. Is it called the Super Grover pers- roller coaster? <laughs> mm-hmm. Ooh, I don't think I've ever personally had a just like terrible day at a carnival. But I did go to a carnival that they had like a spinny ride, which was pretty fun. Uh, I went on it once, I think. And it was one of those things where it, like, spins around so fast that the centrifugal force just, like, pushes you up against the wall. Oh, yes. yeah, that, mm-hmm. and, uh, We had one of those at our local yeah. amusement park. I, I remember the dude next, me and, like, the dude next to me that I'd never met in my life <laughs> oh, were having not a grand now. old time. And we, like, high-fived oh, and okay, stuff good during the ride. But then my, one of my siblings had so much fun on the ride that they went on it like 20 more times or something and then they were just feeling sick for the rest of the day and couldn't enjoy anything uh, yeah yeah that sounds about right if it's anything like the one we've got <laughs> like the one we have like they drop out the floor from underneath you so you're just yeah. like stuck to the wall yeah I think there's like nothing that. holding you in place you're just you know you, they just tell you to like stand against the wall and then they start the thing and just spin around for a bit. Yeah, that's the same one. So, mm-hmm. these four notes were the last four notes I got to 100% this game, because I was stuck on here for, like, ever. And I couldn't find, uh-huh. like, four more notes in Click Clock Wood, and those were the four right there. Because, like, I didn't think of, like, I thought I'd already been in there in all seasons, and I guess I haven't. Uh-huh. Yeah, you really have to, like, comb over this entire level, like, diligently to get everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's, like, a very vertical level to have to do that into. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it is nice that they change out the scenery and the music each time, but, like, when you do when you step back from it, you are just, like, going through the same geometry, like, four times. Yeah. I think that's the only thing that's really holding this level back for me. Because, like, I always really enjoy it, you know, when, when you do the, stri- the spring part, it's just, like, all really nice and atmospheric and everything's new. And then it just you just kind of keep going through it over and over again, and it loses a bit of its magic, but it's still like fun the whole way through. Mm-hmm. This oh god, this house is just precariously placed. <laughs> uh-huh. Just so nervous walking around on it. <laughs> you know, I never thought about it before, but it is kind of balancing between two kind of spindly-looking tree branches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, it sparks the dragonfly. Yeah. yeah, he's back. He does... His model is pretty similar. Mm-hmm. And colors. Yeah, now that I've actually started playing Spyro, I, I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> now, there's one acorn during this part that always trips me up, like, every single time I play this game. I'll see if you guys agree when I get to it. But there are six acorns we need to find after we <laughs> please reconnect our controller. Was it just the batteries, or is it just like a poorly ke- poor connection? I, I think it's just old, and like the uh, the battery pack is like worn out and doesn't stay in very well. For all I know, it could be the rumble feature that's like causing it to disconnect. 
Even the acorns have eyes. And they I look like the this. they look like the eyes of that sad cat meme. <laughs> <laughs> sad acorn. It was ahead of its time. <laughs> Please don't eat me. Yeah, it's like it knows what its fate is. Yeah. It's this whole level is just about collecting food to like feed to larger creatures. <laughs> Like the sentient, terrified food. <laughs> yeah, the caterpillars make sense because they're like creatures al already. But like the acorns being <laughs> <laughs> like having sentience and being able to speak. You know, something that just occurred to me, you know, Nabnut was all fat in the summer, but now he's back to his like normal size. So has he, like, not eaten anything since, like, he initially ate all those acorns? Oh yeah, because the joke is that he <laughs> he just binged through all of his, uh, all the acorns he was saving up for hibernation in, uh, summer. Mm -hmm. or spring so, or whatever. six. <laughs> well, he had a he, big uh, pile that he was sitting on. He spent all that energy for squirrel rut, so, uh... <laughs> oh god. You know, some, some animals do starve to death after rut. It, it's... It's it's a thing that happens. It's not pretty. <laughs> but not not in the whimsical world of Banjo Kazooie, though. <laughs> At this point, I was like, "Well, five seems like a pretty good number. Time to go cash in my acorns." Nope. Mm. There's still one more. Can you guess where it is? Down there. Oh God. On that terrifying slope, like uh, hundreds of feet uh, above the ground. It even like because the angle change is so sharp. It even kind of like. Jolts you, jolts you over a little bit when you uh -huh. first cross over it. Oh, yeah. And it, like, hides it from view. <laughs> Here we see a native red squirrel who has lost all of his nuts. Welcome to Planet Banjo, <laughs> hosted by David Attenborough. Yes. Planet Banjo. Yeah, I, I remember back when I played, I was, uh... The last thing, the last collectible I was missing was I was missing one of the honeycomb pieces. Winter has come at last. <laughs> I was missing one of the honeycombs <laughs> from this world, so I ended up uh, basically just testing out a, a lot of the different areas that just seeing if you can get in them in the seasons that you're not supposed to be in them, like the window up there in the fall and uh, getting into. Uh, Naughty's hut hole in the summer, stuff like that. Just looking for mm -hmm. that honeycomb, but if I could somehow bring the termite <laughs> transformation in here. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, does the termite sink? Uh, yes, he does. Oh my god! And he also climbs slopes. Well, no, I mean, because in, in in summer you can't get into Naughty's house because there's no water to swim through. Oh, but yeah. if you had the termite, maybe maybe you'd be mm -hmm. singing a different tune. Uh huh. Oh god! Big bird. Where's where's this thing's parents? We it, like, what are we this are thing's parents? Because <laughs> okay. it's his mom. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, they're basically the same creature, you know, just a vast variation in yeah, size. Kazooie is actually an infant. At some point, she's going to get that big. Oh my god! <laughs> I was gonna say, and then Banjo I will be Irie... the one riding in the backpack. I was gonna say, Irie is like a humongous eagle, like when she's a baby. Uh -huh. What are the adult eagles? Are, are there just like giant, like jumbo jet-sized eagles patrolling the skies of <laughs> the Isle of Hags or whatever? <laughs> Is that it, the it, name of the island that they? Yeah, that's that's on? the name of the world where the where the Banjo Kazooie games take place. The Isle of sorry, not the Isle of Hags, the Isle O Hags. Yeah. You're just going around minding your own business, and then a giant eagle just swoops down and grabs Banjo into the talons and flies off. Uh huh. That's the plot of Banjo Three. <laughs> yeah. Banjo is just dead. <laughs> Who's gonna rescue Banjo? <laughs> Bottles is just like it was me last time. Mm. You're next, bear. Oh god, you have to play as Bottles. <laughs> oh yeah, this oh, is god. G. Bottles Kazooie. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. I was saving this one for last because I knew I was going to have to drop down. Uh, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure I was like really stressed out during the recording mm. of this because I just, I just wasn't playing very well. Like I kept falling down and like mm. dying and having to redo stuff. We won't judge you harshly. 
that's what the comment section's for. If people comment on the video. <laughs> yeah. God, where's the exit to this place? Engagement is important, mm -hmm. right? That's what I hear. It is a tiny hole in the wall. How come? I wonder why the goblin guys don't change their attire from a uh, time to time. No, they do. In the they summer, do? they weren't wearing shirts. Oh. And they were wearing sunglasses, I think. Okay, that's kind of funny. But you better put a shirt on for this one, because next time we're going into the winter section of Click Clockwood, the final section. Yeah. I have a feeling it's going to look awfully similar to Freeze Easy Peak, but don't, you know, you <laughs> didn't hear that Freeze Easy Peak 2, baby! <laughs> it's time for a freeze, Banjo. Stay cool. <laughs>